Hello everyone, I must warn you before you watch my video for today that there are spoilers for Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This little bit I put in front of my video was just to warn you that the ending of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood will be spoiled if you watch this video. If you don't care, go ahead and watch it, but be warned. Hello, I'm Christopher Williams. And this is my YouTube channel, Read Comics, They're Bad For You. Or if you're watching this on my BitChute account, Comic Freak, welcome. We're today we're going to be talking about how the SJWs are coming for Quentin Tarantino. We'll start off with the fact that, that a bunch of liberal writers have attacked him with articles and insults saying that he's belittling what happened to Sharon Tate in his movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Even though the movie has very little to do with the Tate murders and more to do with Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt's characters Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth who they play respectively. Uh, and how in their time in Hollywood appears to be coming to an end as they grow older, and with them dealing with the fact of them basically, well, their stars are fading, and they're basically being pushed out of Hollywood in the 60s by newer, younger, and more hip stars. Here we can see Margaret Robbie, who plays Sharon Tate, who's dancing with well, both Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. It would appear that this part of the movie is dealing with the characters all being at one of those big Hollywood parties that you, uh, well, you hear about and stuff. Most likely, Leonardo and Brad Pitt's characters are enjoying themselves during the 60s at one of these big, huge parties and are genuinely dancing with Sharon Tate and having a good time. This movie is supposed to be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's a made-up version, or at least Quentin Tarantino's made-up version, of how we would like to think about what Hollywood was like back then. It's about these two men who are aging out, but still raring and roaring to go and trying to have a good time. But the SJWs have attacked him, saying that he's belittling what happened to Sharon Tate, even though she has a very small part in it, much like... Um, Al Pacino and Kurt Russell, respectively, who play their own parts in this movie. But Quentin Tarantino, for daring like he has before in uh, The Inglorious Bastards, daring to change what happened in the original timeline by having Sharon Tate be rescued by Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth, saving her and the other two people who were murdered during the, the Manson family murders. Now, because of that, the SJWs have called Quentin Tarantino a misogynist and a, well, I wouldn't put it past them saying he's a racist, even though he made Kill Bill and, well, the uh, respectively De Chango Unchained. One, a very pro-woman movie, and the other, a pro-black movie. But all this is because Quentin Tarantino refuses the total line for the SJWs. So they have continuously attacked him. And it's not going to do any good. The guy doesn't care what the SJWs or the NPCs think about him. He just wants to make his own brand of movies. A brand that hasn't been seen since the 70s with his Groundhouse movies and his rather killer way of directing. Otherwise, the way he's always made movies. Only he's now being attacked by these pearl-clutching SJWs because he refuses to bow to them, which is a good thing. I salute you, Quentin Tarantino, if I at times dislike your character. You are at least r a real guy. Well, I mean that you're as real as anyone in Hollywood can be. And I, and that's one of the things I just like about you, but at least you're much more realer than Elizabeth Warren with her saying that she's Native American. And, but we're talking about Quentin Tarantino here. He's as about as fake as a person can possibly get, just like everyone else in Hollywood. 
but at least he's standing up for himself and not letting bullies and NPCs grind him down and tell him what to do. This is a good thing. We're finally maybe seeing some fight back and, and people trying to push back against the social justice warriors with them continuously mocking everyone and insulting people and the NPCs who continuously parrot them because they have no will of their own. But because we're in the middle of a moral panic and they expect to be listened to, the NPCs and the SJWs yell like there's no tomorrow and then we continuously grind our teeth and some of us even listen to them and while others say don't and they end up, for all their trouble, get, get attacked as soon as they turn their backs on these people. But Quentin didn't do that. He hasn't really acknowledged it or really cared. He continues to do what he wants and to make the movies he wants to make. And I have to say, that's a good thing. And I'm glad he's doing what he always does. Now, I'm not the biggest Quentin Tarantino fan, but I have enjoyed a great many of his movies. And they are good. Even if I think the way they people act in their, these wor worlds he's created seem off, but that's what the point of it. He's going back to an old type of filmmaking that hasn't been really seen, as I've said, since the 70s. The Grindhouse. And in this movie, he goes back to the 60s and makes and alters the timeline by actually having two... Well, are these actually real actors? Did Cliff Booth and Rick Dalton actually exist? It doesn't matter. He's making these guys up because he wants to tell a story where instead of what happened, the Tate murders that happened with the Manson family, he wants to alter it. He wants to change what happened. He wants to tell a story where this actor and this stunt double actually stop the murders and presumably kill Charles Manson and, and his cult of followers. Well... It sounds like a good movie, and I applaud it. And if I actually get out and see it, maybe I will enjoy this movie like I enjoyed Kill Bill. Or From Dusk Till Dawn. I enjoyed that movie because it was a great vampire movie, and it had a couple of cool leads in it, one of them being Quentin Tarantino himself, the other being George Clooney, and they played a pair of brothers who were a couple of wanted criminals who didn't take no gruff from no man. It was just an awesome movie, and watching a couple of characters like this go up against vampires was just awesome. Too bad Quentin's character was killed early on, but George Clooney pretty much carried the entire movie anyway. But I will say it was one hell of a great role both of them played. And if this movie is half as good as... From Dusk Till Dawn or Kill Bill. I think we have a classic on our hands. And I think you all should go and see it when you have the time. If anything, just to turn your noses up to all the SJWs and that and say to them, we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to see this movie and we're going to enjoy it. And that's enough shilling. Because I might like this movie or I might not. But I still have, I still have my problems with Quentin Tarantino and the way he makes film, films anyway. Sometimes his films just rub me the wrong way, but I do enjoy them. But that style and substance in each director or creator has his own. And sometimes no one can be expected to like everything a creator makes. But that doesn't mean he should be continuously attacked because his politics or his or he himself doesn't line up with what the NPCs and SJWs think that someone in, in his position should do. They think he should bow down to them and lick their toes and tell them that they are great and good people. Well, that's not how the world works. So, NPCs and SJWs, go off to your safe places and cry yourselves to sleep. Because, well, people have got to make it do and make what they want to make. Meaning, you can't expect everybody to, or anybody, to bow down to you and tell them to make this movie this way when they want to make it their own way. If he did it your way, he wouldn't be Quentin Tarantino anymore, would he? And we'd end up with another disaster like Ghostbusters or a Me Yorker movie like Go Captain Marvel. Now, if you like this video, 
subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you have not subscribed, please subscribe to me on YouTube at Read Comics, They're Bad For You. And I want you to go over to BitChute and subscribe to me there at Comic Freak. Hit that bell for notifications, hit that like button, and leave some comments down below. And remember, keep checking back in future videos for more information on my own upcoming independent comic book, Scum Dogs. I'm Chris Williams, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video or review.